Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul and this time we have something different for you. Uh, I've been traveling overseas in Indonesia. If you're not sure where that is, you can see it now. And uh, I visited the first motor museum in Southeast Asia in the city of Batu. And I thought I'd take you with me. I was surprised at the size of the museum. It has over 300 exhibits from the US and several European countries, including, of course, Great Britain. Let's get into it. For some of the cars, particularly the Europeans, they created some attractive street scenes which really set the mood. The first of those, as you can see here, is called Gangster Town. It's meant to reflect Hollywood and a number of suitable period American vehicles lining the street, as you can see. Next we went inside into the main exhibition hall, the very large building. The lighting wasn't the best, so apologies for the occasional lo loss of focus with the camera, but already there's a British car there, as you can see, a 1950s Riley, lovely thing. Most of the other exhibits here were American, but not all of them, so bear with me, uh, there's something for everybody here, and all of the cars in beautiful condition, many being polished while I was walking around, it's quite amazing. Now, of course, the cars in this collection reflect what was in the market in the location where we are. So being in Asia, um, a lot of American cars from the early days. This one's a Chevrolet, particularly nice, very similar to a Chevrolet, a 1931 Chevrolet I owned. Um, beautiful cars. Next one is an interesting thing, this Velorex. I've never seen one of these before. Not surprising when you consider it's a three wheeler from Czechoslovakia. These were made between the 1950s until 1971. Fascinating. The same company also made a sidecar which is still being manufactured to this day. Now here's a German beauty I'm sure some of you have recognized already. It's a Porsche 911 from 1972. To think I was 14 years old watching David Bowie on Top of the Pops when this was made and yet it still looks current. Incredible and quite beautiful. What a lovely motor car. Next up, another Brit, an Allard J2X. It says 1991 on the plate there, but according to Wikipedia, Allard manufactured the J2X from um, 1952 until 1954. X meaning extended. It had a 170 brake horsepower engine, so not a slow vehicle. If any of you can confirm the dates, that would be helpful, please, in the comments. It could be that this is a replica, of course. Next up, the legendary and beautiful Shelby Cobra. Uh, the British company AC uh, completed painted and trimmed cars without engines and gearbox, sent them over to the east coast of the US, where Shelby installed a 4.7 litre V8 Ford engine. Now this is one where some of you might be able to help me out. Obviously a custom vehicle. No idea what it is. There was no signage. You can see lots of modern uh, indicators like the wheels, uh, the seating obviously not vintage or classic. So uh, it was attractive nevertheless. So if you know what that is, please let us know in the comments. Next up an absolutely huge 1959 Ford Fairlane. I ran the camera along the length of it. It's not an optical illusion, it really was that big. Beautiful condition, but what a ridiculous thing. Imagine trying to drive that on a European road. No chance, but lovely all the same. Real piece of history there. And speaking of history, here's a little collection of Ford Model A's. These really were a significant car in motoring history. First a Model T, obviously we all know the first car uh, using mass production techniques pioneered by Henry Ford. In lovely condition this one, they're really quite difficult to drive. Now they didn't have the standard three pedal control layout that we've all become used to with old cars. However, here's the Model A. This one was the replacement for the Model T and had the more conventional three pedal layout. Although at this point, the accelerator was between the clutch and the brake pedals. Uh, I had the pleasure of driving a Ford Model A from 1928 a number of times a few years ago, uh, running tourists around in Hawke's Bay here in New Zealand. And um, it was quite a quick car because it was mostly made of metal. 
didn't have the big wooden frame that many cars of this period had so they were very popular very competitively priced thanks to Ford's mass production techniques and hence there are quite a number of them still around uh, you'll see lots of them on the road of vintage car clubs and clearly a good collection here with a number of different body options this one a two-seat sedan with a dicky seat there in the back really quite beautiful the Model A was launched in December 1927 and in the first two years sales hit 3 million. All in all, uh, production ended in 1932, 4.8 million had been built by that time across all the different body styles. Quite phenomenal numbers. And this last one we're seeing at the end here is an open top Tourer Ford Model T, the earlier model. And now for something completely different, as Monty Python used to say, a 1963 Corvette Stingray. Every boy's dream, like a sci-fi uh, concept car, incredible thing. This blue one's a Corvette C1, it's the first generation of the Corvette, produced from 53 until 62. The most expensive C1 in history was sold for more than half a million pounds. Here I'm heading up the stairs to the uh, mezzanine layer upstairs. I love this first one. It's labelled as a Dodge Depot or Depot hack from the 1920s. Look at that. Fabulous condition too. Beside the Dodge is another Ford Model A. This one a pickup truck. Again being beautifully restored. Just look at the paintwork on this. Lovely thing. Now I had to show you this just because I've never seen one before. It's labelled as a quadricycle and apparently that's a replica. I wouldn't have known but uh, interesting all the same. Now if memory serves this is the only Japanese car I saw there. Suzuki CV1 micro car and of course a Heinkel. Cabink. I think that had a different name in the UK. That completed the main hall and there's a few vehicles on the walkway to the next one. This uh, Chevrolet bus was the first. I've never seen one of those before. Interesting. Very crude as you can see. Next, much more familiar. Looking a little the worse for wear. 1957 Morris Traveller. And then a Mercedes truck. This one is a Mercedes 911. Not to be confused with the Porsche. I don't think it would be. And then uh, another Brit, a Morris LC3. Couldn't find any information about this one online. It says 1950s. Uh, Bedford K series, much more familiar. I know one of those here in Napier, beautifully restored. It's a good old truck, good workhorse. Now from the sublime to the ridiculous, this crazy looking thing is a jeepney. Uh, not sure I'd want to be seen in one of those, but interesting all the same. Beside it here, another American vehicle. This one is an Apache. That's a Chevrolet model. Forerunner of the Range Rover, I guess. Beside that, not a Bedford, but a Fiat. These had a diesel engine and were built from 51 until 1965. When your classic car cover is coming up for renewal, try our club scheme arranged with Peter James Insurance. It offers great rates and a range of exclusive benefits including free salvage retention and multi-vehicle options. Just click the link in the description below to get a quote. Now we're into the second hall at the museum. This one wasn't labelled as anything in particular but uh, almost all of the cars in there were American. So uh, that's the theme here. We'll walk along. There's the odd uh, outlier. As a, you can see a Morris Minder coming up on the right there. Gorgeous row of 1920s sedans. I won't name them all because you can see the plates for yourselves. Then an enormous, uh, I call it a people carrier truck. I'm not sure what that was. The blue one is a very large Chevrolet. And then um, a Toyota truck. This is interesting. I've not seen one of these before. 1967. I really like that. It looks like a giant Tonka toy, doesn't it? And next, a row of really beautiful American sedans. 
Uh, I won't name them all because, again, you can see the names on the plates under the grills here, but let's look at the styling. The chrome, the wings, they're enormous and really lovely. Beautifully kept too. Now take a look at this Nash uh, Ambassador. Doesn't it remind you of the Nash Metropolitan built in coordination with Austin? Very similar styling. There's a Chevrolet Standard 6. Look at the guy polishing away there on this Pontiac. They worked hard, these uh, attendants in the museum, and it certainly showed. Now we're into the next hall and some Italians starting with a Vespa. As you can see, this is one of the street scenes I mentioned earlier, providing a bit of atmosphere. This red and white car is a Fiat 1100cc. I don't know why it's painted like that. Maybe it was a taxi, but there was no signage to indicate that. Next up, this police car. Absolutely lovely Fiat 850 Sport. I do like that. Look how thin the pillars are. Gorgeous. Next there, an Alpha. Looking as stunning as you would expect an Alpha. Sorry, it was a bit gloomy here in the uh, Italian hall, so uh, if the picture's not up to standard, I apologise. Finally, uh, another Fiat estate car. No prizes for guessing. This is the French hall. Beautifully done. Starting off with a really lovely Peugeot estate. This is from the early 60s. It looks great. 1964. Now, you probably don't need me to tell you what that one is, but of course it's a 1972 Citroen 2CV. A little more unusual for me anyway. This one's a Citroen Mahari, 1976. These were built in uh, two-wheel and four-wheel drive and had plastic bodywork to keep it light as a recreational vehicle. I was delighted to see one of my favourite classics of all time, of course, the Citroen DS. Stunningly beautiful, amazing car, real uh, innovations in terms of the technology deployed and amazing to think that this replaced the Citroen Traction Avant, which itself was a legendary car. And if you put the two side by side, it's as if they come from different centuries. Incredible. Now we move on into the German hall, again a street scene, and first up a beautiful 190 SL Mercedes-Benz from 1961. Only an 1800cc engine, but what a car. Next to that, the W180 Mercedes. This is the one I think they call the Ponton. I really like these two, they're very distinctive. And just look at the interior, quite stylish. And I know it's nerdy, but I love that steering wheel. Look at this little motorcycle, the red one. Love the name, the Zundap Kombinet. And they're still in business. Over here, the VW Carmen gear. It says 1968. Did they really make them that late? Well, I've checked and yes, they did. They made them up until 1975. I'm quite amazed. It's a beautiful little car. I really like these. This one's a soft top, as you can see. Gorgeous. This beauty is a Mercedes 280S. This uh, model was introduced in 1968. In Indonesia, they were known as the Mercedes-Benz Mini, amusingly. Still a gorgeous car. Nothing very Mini about it, in my opinion, but I do like it. Just look at the shine on that bodywork. Well done to the museum staff. Now back to the 1960s and the Mercedes 200. Very nice in its light-coloured bodywork. I do like the interior. I just love the styling of these. Look at that. Gorgeous. Reminds me of the Vanden Plaid models that came out of the UK. Very, very smart. Little wings there as a nod to the American fashions of the late 50s, early 60s. Gorgeous condition. Absolute credit to the museum. And lastly, not a German, of course, a Volvo 164. It's got uh, taxi colouring, the black and yellow. Wonderful cars, the Volvos of that period even though the colour is a bit garish for my tastes. An amazing yeah. Pullman 600, look at the length of that, followed by a Volkswagen 411, and then another Ponton, this is the 219 model from the early 50s. Oh. Finally, another uh, smart Mercedes, this is the 200, and then 
a 560 SL. Sorry, it's a quick look at those. I was in a bit of a hurry. Would like to have lingered longer over these last couple, but uh, there we go. And last, but certainly not least, the British Room. Again, there's a street layout, rear quarter like there. Of course, this is the Anglia Estate from Ford UK. Very smart, looking quite tidy. This was a 1959 vintage. Next up, we're into the early 1970s and some unusual rear light protectors there. This one, of course, is an ADO 16. It's the Morris 1300. Slightly different front indicator lenses than we're used to seeing. Then the Mini with Mr. Bean on the roof, of course. Uh, Morris Mini, this one. It's a 1974. Next to that is um, a 1953 Vauxhall 104. This one done out as a taxi. Lovely condition. Not sure about those shiny strips along the side. Finally, in the British room, 1951 Austin A40 Devon. Not bad, this one at all. Uh, I think the indicators aren't original. Some of the paint is slightly different, but overall in good, solid condition. You don't see these very often. I love it. And then coming out of the British Hall is a very large and quite amusing Buckingham Palace uh, facsimile. So that's it from Indonesia. I hope you've enjoyed it. Join us again next time. Thank you for watching and please remember to give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps support the channel and means you'll be notified when we post new videos.